Pastor Michelle is saying hello and good morning. Welcome to worship here at Bread of Life, Deaf Lutheran Church. My name is Michelle Lewis, and I'm the pastor here at Bread of Life. Welcome. Dorothy saying hello. My name is Dorothy Sparks. I'm a deacon here, and I'm glad that you're here to worship with us today. And I am David Evans, ASL interpreter. Dorothy saying, good morning. This is May 9th, the sixth Sunday of Easter. We will continue to celebrate Easter for one more week. Throughout Easter, we continue to proclaim, yes, Christ is alive. Alleluia. Even though the world around us feels like death is everywhere, Christ is risen. So, if you have some confetti left from your torn up paper chains like this, every time we say Alleluia, go ahead and throw some confetti in the air with us to celebrate. Pastor Michelle, today is also Mother's Day. We give thanks for mothers. We lift up prayers for those who long to become mothers. And we give thanks to those who have cared for us like mothers. We ask for strength to cope with, shall we say, difficult mothers. Deacon Dorothy. Today in worship, we continue our study of the Book of Acts. We consider how we grow closer to God in faith and closer to one another through our care for one another. Pastor Michelle, we will continue our study of the book of Acts throughout the summer. How does the Holy Spirit work miracles among us now? How does the Holy Spirit encourage us in our faith for the sake and benefit of others. Deacon Dorothy, we want to remind you that we will begin outdoor worship here at Bread of Life starting on June 6th. So bring a lawn chair or a yard chair If you need a chair, contact the church office. Make sure that you bring a mask because we will remain masked and socially distanced. And we continue to live stream so that even if you can't be with us in person, you can still participate in worship with us online. Pastor Michelle. There are lots of jobs to do. So contact the church office if you're interested in volunteering and we'll get you connected. I'll put the email link in the video. So reach out to us via email. Now let us enter into worship.
Christ is risen. Congregation, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. God has broken the chains of death forever. Alleluia. Congregation, let our praises ring. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always, and also with you. Prayer for the day. Creator of the universe, you made the world in beauty. You restore all things in glory through the victory of Christ. We pray that wherever your image is still disfigured, by poverty, sickness, selfishness, war, and greed. We pray that the new creation in Jesus Christ may appear through justice, love, and peace. To the glory of your name, amen. I just want to say a couple of things to introduce the Bible lesson this morning. Uh, questions that popped up during uh, Bible study this last week. So one of the questions is the, the name of the book that we're studying is called Acts of the Apostles. And the question came up, who are the apostles exactly? And they are the 12 disciples. Really it's 11 disciples that were with Jesus because Judas has died. But it's 12 because they replaced Judas and they did this by, you know, made a list of names of people that they knew who were uh, around and responsible and involved. And then they like drew straws. So Matthias is one of the, uh, now he is one of the 12 disciples renamed to apostles. because they were close to Jesus. They were the folks who were really close to Jesus. And then as we will see later, Paul is also added to that group of apostles because Paul met Jesus on the road and became an apostle. So that is one, uh, one thing I just wanted to say, we haven't talked about the name of the book that much. So, and then the other thing um, 
is a concept called the fear of the Lord. And it's not being afraid of God. It's more like the understanding that God is God and we are not. So it's like we people become a little, we, we become more humble because it's kind of easy for us to start to think of ourselves as more important than we are. Uh, to think of ourselves as like in control of our surroundings. And so it really is this idea of that we become more humble and recognize that we are not God, that we are not in control. And it's also this sense of awareness that God, who is the creator of everything, that God wants to know me. And that God cares about me. So that's what's what the idea of the fear of the Lord, which sometimes shows up when we when we read the Bible. I know Dorothy isn't going to sign it like that, but that's the idea that is kind of what people are experiencing in this Bible lesson today. So those are my comments I wanted to say before Dorothy shares today's Bible lesson. Reading from the book of Acts 2, verses 42 through 47. Peter told them many other things as well. On that day, about 3,000 believed the message and were baptized. They spent their time learning from the apostles, and they were like family to one another. They also shared the Lord's Supper and prayed together. Everyone was amazed by the many miracles and wonders that the apostles worked. And the Lord's followers often met, and they shared everything. The followers sold their property and their possessions and gave money to whomever needed it. Day after day, they met together in the temple. They shared the Lord's Supper together in different homes. They shared their food happily and freely while praising God. Everyone respected them. Each day, the Lord added to their group others who were being saved. Word of God, word of life. My friends, grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus. All right, in today's 
Bible lesson, we arrive finally at the end of chapter two in the book of Acts. This is our third week on just that one chapter. So when we started it, the Holy Spirit was poured out on the apostles and the followers of Jesus. You remember that it looked like a fire on everyone's head. And there was a big wind that went through the room that they were in. And then last week, we talked about the effect of Peter's sermon that more than 3,000 became believers after Peter explained and described to them what God was doing in um, the Holy Spirit coming. And so with that, as we contemplated what Peter was saying, we too practice trusting Jesus. And with believers from across all time, we spent time reflecting on and wondering at how trust can change our lives and can change others' lives. And now this week, we learn also from those early followers and believers those folks who spent time together sharing their prayers and worship, sharing their meals and resources. It's a group of people who came from all over the known world. They didn't live in the same places. They didn't have the same experiences growing up. They did have a shared faith because they were, for the most part, they were Jewish. And they witnessed this amazing event in Pentecost. Because not only did it look like there were flames over everyone's head, but the disciples and the believers, they all started um, speaking languages, for, I, I think, to signing in languages that they didn't all know. And so the people who were there could understand them. They could understand what was being said. They could understand what was happening with that event of Pentecost. And Peter helped them interpret those events. Through their shared faith, Peter helped them to see that Jesus was a continuation, is a continuation of that God-given faith. And many, many people that day and since then have put their faith and trust in Jesus as God. That God has amazingly come to us in a person, in a body. In this story, those new believers trusted and believed. And they spent as much time together as they could worshiping and praying, studying and discussing what they experienced, wondering and being in awe of God's actions. Now for that group of people, their shared history and their shared faith helped them to know that God had taken physical actions in the past, but God had not shown up in a body. God had only just been spirit or fire or smoke. You know, that cloud that went with the uh, Israelites as they left Egypt. God for them had been a holy presence. 
but a totally other kind of presence, not the same as people. Not a person. And so they had to take time to like understand what does it mean that God shows up in a body? Now, I have to say, David and I have worked together for about five years, and David is honest with me. And he said, what does that mean? I don't understand that. So I said, okay, I'll try to give an example of a little bit of what I mean. So in the last five years of my being here at Bread of Life, I have learned stories from all of you. Stories about seeing sign language for the first time. And Tim Buell has shared with me at different points in time of his first experience going to Gallaudet. He remembers walking into the cafeteria and seeing all these people signing to each other, communicating with each other, hands up and they were, and, and Tim was shocked and amazed to see this communication. That it was, each person was able to show what they were thinking and feeling with sign language. And I think this idea of like God is showing up in a body that God is, is no longer far away in a spirit, but God is here in a body. It feels to me like that idea that Tim has shared of walking in and like seeing communication. Not struggling to understand, not trying to figure out what are you saying with lip reading? Not that slow process of writing a note back and forth, but being able to say, here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm experiencing. I think that's what I'm trying to say is the, those believers, like they had to take time to figure out what does it mean when God shows up in a person, in a body. And I think you here at Red of Life can relate to this idea about like learning again what it's like to be in person, to be with one another. We all in the world now are starting to relate to this in a new way because we're coming out of a year of being distanced and isolated from one another because of COVID, right? We're coming out of this time of like relating to each other through video form or emails or text messages or maybe writing letters or sending pictures back and forth, but really, really limited with our in-person being together kind of experiences. So we're starting all, the whole world, starting to go, oh yeah, that's what it feels like to be together again. That's what it feels like to be in a room with another person or a group of people. 
Right. So this, I think this year of COVID like has for me at least really helped me go, I connected the Bible in this new way. Like it's more than just in my head. It's more than just in my heart. Like my body, I feel it in a new way. I remember, I think it was about six months ago, I started to have a few meetings in person. We were careful, we kept our distance, we wore our masks, but for when we needed to be in person. And those meetings were with people I would see, you know, through Zoom. So it wasn't like somebody I hadn't seen for a long, long time. But I remember it feeling very different to be in a room with another person rather than just seeing them on my computer. Wouldn't even need to talk. Just being in the room reminded me that the person, that whole person was with me and I was there with them. And this, I think this is like what those, what we as believers, we spend all of our lives learning that this is who Jesus is. Jesus is God. The whole, the fullness of God in person, in the room with us. And Jesus experiences what we experience, hunger and thirst, joy and sorrow, friendship and loneliness. This, I think, is what we believers and followers of Jesus have been trying to like, learn and understand and like put it into our lives ever since the resurrection. that God in Jesus Christ comes to us in person. And that in Jesus, God reaches out to all of those people who were pushed aside and forgotten. That Jesus goes to those who are sick and hungry to those who are desperate and lonely. We can see through Jesus' life what God does, how God acts, where God goes, and to whom God shows kindness and restoration. And when we are followers of Jesus, when we imitate Jesus with our lives, then our lives reflect the message, God loves you. Everywhere we go. So as I mentioned just a couple minutes ago, uh, it will be five years that I've been here at Bread of Life. Uh, so in the middle of June, it'll be five years. So five years ago, I met you. 
And five years ago, you showed me what it means to be followers of Jesus. So in June of 2016, when I met you all, Bread of Life was hosting the ELDA conference, the Evangelical Lutheran Deaf Association conference. You all hosted the ELDA community, people from all over the United States connecting with deaf ministry. You also welcome to Minnesota, Pastor Ruth Yulia. She serves in Nigeria. You welcomed all those people and you spent as much time together as you could. You ate together, you studied together, you worshiped and prayed together. You shared stories of what God was doing in your lives, how you noticed God as you served others. In one another, you shared the message, God loves you. And this is a gift. You, bread of life, you are a gift. Because you know in your bodies, in your culture, in your language, you know what it feels like to immerse yourselves in your experience. You know how important it is to be together, to be seen and known and accepted just as you are. This is a gift, a gift, and it's a gift that you, bread of life, that you can continue to share with others. With others in the deaf community and others like me, I'm not in the deaf community, but you have welcomed me in. It's a gift that you continue to share with people who haven't had this kind of experience. people who don't know about deaf culture, people who feel lonely and isolated. You, bread of life, you are faithful followers of Jesus. And you understand you really do understand what it means for God to show up in a body. Because you uh, treasure your time together. You experience God when you share meals, when you chat together, You honor time for worship and prayer. You share your resources and your experiences with one another so that everyone is lifted up. You, bread of life, offer gifts of goodness for the whole world. Because God is here, shining through you and your love for one another.
And soon we will rejoice. We will rejoice together in person because as we said at the beginning of worship on June 6th, we will begin outdoor worship here at Bread of Life. We want you to bring your own lawn chairs and be ready to wear face coverings because we want to take care of everyone among us. And worship will begin that day, June 6th at 10.30 a.m. So until then, peace be with you. Amen. Prayers of the people. Creator of the universe, you made the world in beauty. Actually, you know what? That's the wrong prayer. My apologies. That was the prayer for the day. Let's do the prayer for the people, the actual prayer for the people. Here we go. Lord Jesus Christ, you conquered death. You rose from the dead and are alive forevermore. Help us remember and experience your loving presence with us. Help us remember you are with us whenever we feel confused and overwhelmed. You are here to guide and direct us. Whenever we feel sorrow, you are here to comfort and to counsel us. Whenever we feel tempted, you are here to strengthen and inspire us. Whenever we feel lonely, you are here to encourage and befriend us. Whenever we or our loved ones encounter death, you bring all of us to glory on the other side of this life. Help us remember and live so that the hope of resurrection will show through our lives. Amen. Pastor Michelle, may the peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Please share a sign of God's peace with one another. We now celebrate Easter. We continue to celebrate Easter. This amazing promise that death is not the end of the story. And here at Bread of Life, God calls us to share this hope and this promise with the deaf community and their loved ones. The promise that God loves you. And so this is our opportunity to respond and to share some of our resources with Bread of Life. And so every week we do ask you to give generously. And you can donate some money to Bread of Life uh, through whether you write a check and send it in the mail or you can use our website 
um, to use some online giving options. So our website address is www.breadoflifedef.org. Thank you for your generous support. An offering prayer. God, you come to us. Now receive these gifts and our lives. Congregation, we lift our hearts to you as you lifted Jesus up from the grave. Through Jesus, bring everything from bondage to freedom from death to life. Amen. And now let us pray as Jesus taught in sign. receive this blessing before we go. Darkness has become light. Sorrow has given way to joy and hope. As you have been transformed by the power of the cross, go forth into the world and share the good news, God loves you. We go in the name of the Creator and Savior and the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Congregation, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. You are Christ's body. Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace. Share God's good news. God loves you. Congregation, thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. <laughs>